Hey everybody, the stuff I'm going to show you in this video is absolutely insane, and if you want to stay in the know, I really suggest you subscribe to this channel. In one of my previous videos, I showed you guys Gaussian splatting, where you can basically take scans of real life environments, and then you can turn those scans into models, just using the video from your phone. It's absolutely insane, the stuff you guys can do nowadays. But there's also other technology that I've been showing off, video generation, where you can generate video, you can generate images. I mean, you look at MidJourney and all of these other image and video generation tools, it's pretty cool the kind of stuff that you can generate. What if I told you that you can actually create a photogrammetry asset from an AI-generated video? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Now, when it comes to video generation, you guys might have heard of the company Runway ML. This is just one of many companies, including open source projects, that are creating video generation models. But Runway has got a bunch of really cool stuff that they've put out. One of the systems is called Act One, which is an AI animation system that allows you to essentially create AI generated videos, but with no hallucinations or artifacting, which is crazy. It also has the ability for you to use camera control. So similar to Google Genie 2, which I showcased yesterday, which is like creating an entire interactive video game out of an AI video generator, Runway ML has something kind of similar where you can tell it to change the camera position of the video. Now, when you think about that, that doesn't seem like that big of a deal until you realize that you could actually use that to put an object on a turnstile in an AI generated video. And once you do that, you can convert it into a photogrammetry asset. And that is just what this individual has done. This is a proof of concept system that was showcased by a studio called Dog Studio. And essentially what they did is they used Runway ML in order to create a video of an object where they just had the camera rotate around the entire thing. And then using that video, they converted that into a Gaussian splat. <laughs> and after you convert anything into a Gaussian splat, I mean, you can take that and you can put it into Unreal Engine 5, which is exactly what they did. And now it's an Unreal Engine 5 and it looks pretty good. Now, compared to what I showed off with Google Genie 2 yesterday, there was a lot of people saying, well, you know, it's really expensive to run because you have to have the AI generate every single frame and you have all of these hallucination issues. And I keep trying to tell you guys, look, all of the AI game generation stuff where you can actually play a fever dream AI video, the entire point of that is not to actually play that game. In the end, what these systems like Google Genie 2 will be used to do will be used to generate actual games, just like this individual with Dog Studio has. Once you create the footage, once you create the concept, there is a way to take that footage and convert it into an actual game engine. And then once it's in the game engine, well, you don't have to sit there simulating and rendering every single frame with an AI anymore. You can just use good old Unity or good old Unreal Engine to render your game and let people play it. That is what is coming. Now, for everyone who is doom and gloom about AI. I don't want these videos to be looked at as doom and gloom. I myself run a game development studio and in many ways I just have to look at these things practically. And I'm going to tell you some practical things that I have thought of that I feel are still going to have value after all of this AI stuff runs its course. Now there's a lot of 3D modelers out there who are really worried about AI taking their jobs. And I will say that AI is very much going to disrupt the 3D modeling space. Lots of things from UV mapping to just topology optimization and stuff like that. AI is going to get really, really good at that. However, one thing that AI is not very good at at all is creating objects that are precise. It's good at creating amorphous things, rocks, characters where, you know, it doesn't really matter what the proportions are, but say if you wanted it to make an AK-47, well, it's not really going to be able to make an AK-47. Now, if you ask it to make a tree, it'll probably do a way better job of making a tree uh, or making a rock, or making, I don't even know, some weird demon thing, instead of an AK-47. And why is that? Well, an AK-47 
requires precision. It is a very specific object with very specific dimensions. And as soon as it no longer has those dimensions, well, it stops being that thing. That's why AI is really good at creating demons, because, you know, what what makes a demon a demon? I don't know, a billion things. What makes a, a tree a tree? A billion things. What makes a rock a rock? A billion things. It's very good at creating convincing models and assets of general stuff. But as soon as you ask it to say, hey, make this single thing precisely, and it has to be the exact same every single time, it really can't do that. Now, some people will say, oh, well, that's why humans are going to have an advantage over AI. Quite frankly, humans can't do that either, <laughs> which is kind of the problem. I mean, if you ever see a 3D modeler who's really good at making AK-47s or you know weapon models, and of course... I have to know this because I run a game development studio that makes military simulation games, so I hire a lot of these people, and the people who are the best 3D modelers for weapons, or really anything that has very specific dimensions, and I mean down to a blueprint engineering level, needs to be perfectly proportioned in order to be considered realistic, the modelers who are the best at creating those assets... The reason they're good at making those assets isn't because they modeled them well. I mean, well, they modeled them well too, but what sets them apart from other people is they're really good at research. They are really good at going out and actually finding the dimensions of the AK-47. A lot of the team members who I hire, the ones that make best assets, are they just sitting there like thinking, oh, what does an AK-47 look like? No, they're going out there and they're downloading schematics. They're going out there and researching and digging up hard information. And I want to say for any game development studio who is trying to protect its value going forward, one of the most valuable things that you can focus on is data for assets that allow you to create precise objects. Because an AI without having the actual information in order to create the object will not be able to perfectly create the object. Even if it has a photo, unless that photo is the entire object all the way around and the entire thing that you're taking the photo of is taken apart and every single thing is taken a picture of, maybe then it could create the asset. But that's the point. In order to get all of that information, get all of those photos, I mean, you're essentially just laser scanning the entire object in every single one of the components. And if that's what you have to do in order to accurately create this asset, then that's not generative AI. You don't need generative AI. You can use it to help you research. You can use it to help you wrap and unwrap models or anything else from a logistics and technical standpoint, but actually generating the object, you don't need generative AI for that. You shouldn't use generative AI for that. What you need is the actual physical object, or at least accurate data on the actual physical object. I'm just saying, if you go in and you tell Meshi.ai, which is an AI 3D modeling tool, generate me an M16. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. So while AI is getting really good at things like rocks and trees and stuff that doesn't require specificity, it is always going to struggle with things that require an engineering level of precision. And the reason for that is because, I mean, again, like I said, an AK-47 either is an AK-47 or it's just wrong. You don't need generative AI for that. You can use generative AI to help you optimize the topology or maybe even create textures or stuff like that. But when it comes to making the actual model, laser scans, laser scans, schematics, detailed photos, hard, accurate data. You don't want to use AI to generate your source data. You need hard, accurate data in order to make anything that is actually accurate. And AI will never replace that. It can't. AI trains on real world data. It cannot generate real world data because as soon as it generates anything, it stops being real world. So remember that. That 
that information is going to save your life one day. Now, to wrap this video up, I want to continue diving down the rabbit hole of integrating AI into game development, however, and there is no better way to showcase that than with this plugin for Unreal Engine called Ludus AI. Do you guys remember yesterday when I made a video saying that a Unreal Engine plugin that will generate blueprint code for you was probably three to six months away? And then I said, actually, you know, it's probably two months away. Well, I was wrong. It was apparently 24 hours away. Actually, not even 24 hours away because it already existed and I just didn't know about it. Welcome to Ludus AI. Now, for those of you who need a refresher, AI can generate code for you, and it's really good at that. In fact, I would say one of the best uses for AI is Code Assistant. Now, don't get me wrong, it can make mistakes, but unlike generating artistic assets like 3D meshes or other things of that nature, code is very much a binary wrong or right thing, and you can do debugging and all sorts of other stuff in order to ensure that the code does what it's supposed to do. I mean, programming is is essentially the language of I mean I don't want to say like the universe but it's it's a universal language of just function and logic and AI is getting really really good not just at creating function and logic but working with humans to improve how they write and build software now for the longest time code has primarily been in a text file where you just have words like in Notepad or anything of that nature. And I mean, that's because in the early days of computers, that's all we had. But over the last many years, there has been this new emergent idea that maybe we could completely change the way that we see code. And that is where we get blueprints in Unreal Engine or just the idea of visual block-based coding, where instead of having a whole bunch of lines in a text document, you have these blocks that you can stitch together that are functions, and you can use those to create other functions and nest that into that. It's the same concept as normal programming, just visual instead of text-based. And because it's visual, it's been a little bit harder to get AI to integrate with that because the visual stuff, I mean, that's made for humans primarily. All of the text stuff is perfect for robots. The visual coding, well, that was made for humans. It wasn't really made for robots. So it's been a little bit harder for robots to pick that up until now. Because Ludus AI is a plugin for Unreal Engine that will not only help troubleshoot your code, but will actually generate blueprint code for you and that is incredible because you will be able to use that here soon to do anything like i said in the last video with the website that i created which by the way if you haven't gone and sign up autogamedev.ai you go to the website and you give it any idea and it will just generate a game for you you are going to in the very near future have game developers probably you guys who download unreal engine and you just say what you want to see and it'll make it if you say hey i want there to be a first person shooter mechanic here it'll just make it if you say hey i want this thing to catch on fire when it gets shot you're not going to have to learn all of the code anymore in order to do that although you still should and i've explained why and i'll explain why again later but you won't have to anymore. Uh, and that is something that Ludus AI is actually enabling. So if you want to go check out Ludus AI, definitely go do that. If you want to go check out Auto Game Dev, because it's kind of the same premise, go sign up for that. That's my site, which I built by myself uh, for my graduate program to show people that I can make stuff. And besides that, if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you press that subscribe button because, man, I'm telling you, we're still not even getting started. From a survival standpoint, you should probably be subscribed to this channel and watching these videos. And if you want to learn how to do this yourself, join our Discord. And besides that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.